All right, today I'll be going uh, through a homework assignment that uh, Ranger Bob uh, gave uh, to our Cobalt Strike learning group. So what it is is that um, for this homework assignment, we're supposed to uh, learn how to use the uh, execute assembly instruction that uh, Cobalt Strike has. So with that, I'm going to jump into the demo. Let's clear all this. So to start off with, uh, the program that we'll be using is this uh, Who Am I program right here. So a very simple uh, C sharp program and it's been assembled and we can then uh, run it to see what happens. So uh, first off, I wanna pull up proc, uh, process one, right? So this will show all of the different uh, Windows events. And so it looks like PowerShell did something. So we can just clear that. So let's see what it looks like uh, when we just run who.exe from a Windows command. So if we do this, what we see here is that uh, we see that cmd.exe does a process create on the who.exe and then who.exe who runs a thread create to uh, run this executable. So that's what it looks like uh, when you run that application from uh, Windows uh, cmd.exe. So let me jump into my uh, beacon here. So I have a beacon on my Linux box that uh, is running on the target machine. So first off, I want to uh, run the shell command from Cobalt Strike and I'll run that who.exe on that target and let's see what that will look like. So I'm running and it gives the output. So we go back here to our Windows box. We see that PowerShell, which is running the beacon, right? It, it does that process create and then it creates cmd.exe, and then cmd.exe creates who.exe, and then that gets executed. So this is, I believe, what is known in Cobalt Strike as the fork and run uh, method of code execution, right? So a lot of things happening there if you use the shell, dot, uh, the shell command in Cobalt Strike. So let's clear that up. Uh, next, uh, so finally, I want to demonstrate uh, using the uh, ex, uh, the assembly ex, the execute assembly command, and with that though, first I have to uh, go over some concepts that are very important to understand when using Cobalt Strike. So uh, first off, that who.exe it's currently on my uh, Windows VM. So what I have to do is I have to uh, download it and make it available to my my Linux machine. So to do that, I could run the download command who.exe. Right, so I run that, it says it's completed. And then if I go and view my downloads, right? So I've downloaded previously, but I'm mean, just gonna go through this process so you can see how it works. So where it's currently residing is on our team server. So uh, from our team server, I then want to sync that file so that it's now, uh, so that it becomes available on my Linux machine. So I'm gonna sync the file and then I'm going to sync it in my uh, Cobalt Strike directory. So go ahead. Okay, download complete. Okay, so now it's available uh, on my uh, Linux machine. So then from here, then I could run the execute assembly. Okay, execute assembly, uh, who.exe. But first let's go to the target really fast and make sure we clean everything. So we have a clean slate there. And then we go back to our Linux machine and then we run it. So we're running the uh, dot net assembly from this execute assembly command, right? It ran ex uh, successfully. And we go back, all we see on the window side is, is, a, is a PowerShell, uh, which is running our beacon. It's calling a process create on run, run DLL 32. So we don't get any of the artifacts of, uh, you know, the actual uh, who.exe binary actually running. So in comparison to the two other methods, the artifact and the, the footprint of this uh, command is much smaller and stealthier than the two other processes. So that's what I wanted to share for this demonstration. And with that, I will end this.